be honest, I don't even care anymore okay. because it's like I have that feeling where it's like so close to Christmas break that it's like what? Who cares? You'll be a different man next year. One take one market. I'll, no, I'll be a different man in like a couple of days. Right, right, right. You know, we all are different men every day. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie's dragging my hair again, and you know what? I'm having like hair emergencies. I'm having a crisis. You've been in a hair crisis all year. Okay, whatever. Um, Since you decided to grow your hair out, I do have to point out you have literally documented on camera been in a hair crisis for a year. Well, yeah, it's hard. It's an what? What is the objective? Because you keep saying like, "Well, I'm in transition." Where are we going? I think everyone's bored of me starting the show. I know, but talking I, I think we hair. all want to know where the fuck we're going. Where? What is the end? Okay, have you? We need to. Know, we need to see a light at the end of this hair tunnel. You've obviously never been a boy, and you've never been <laughs> growing out your hair because it is always from like uh, the beginning stage to like once it's grown out, right. it's not so working. When is the? When are we grown out? Do you, I don't know. It depends on how so fast my hair grows. But, but I am watching. Okay, that guy that keeps. You've sent it to me. Shane sent it to me. That guy that like recreates a Ralph Lauren model's hair. His hair is looking like a six, <laughs> and then he does his hair to look like this Ralph Lauren model, and it's like his hair becomes a ten. And so I bought all those products, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna learn how to style my hair. Does he part his hair down the center? He does. Diff Not. He recreates different right. campaigns. Right, right, right. But I don't know what your beef is with the middle part. It's. It's the way that it looks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a beautiful man with great hair while in transition. If this is just, cr this is crazy. We're going to get there. Okay. I think I need the advice of like a celebrity male hairstylist. I think you need to talk to a short haired lesbian, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's who you need to talk to. <laughs> so I came down. Well, okay. Last week after this podcast, uh, <laughs> it was our birthday. <laughs> we went to the mall, we went shopping and I wanted a few more. Oh, now you're spoiling my second and last shirt of the year. Oh, you already wore this. No, not on the podcast. I got that last Monday. Right. But you wore it on Monday. No. What? You put it on at the mall and wore it the rest of the day. You I've changed your shirt since. at the restaurant oh, at the table. Do you have that footage? Yeah, but it's for me. I know. Just send it to me and I'll overlay it because I was being crazy in public. We. <laughs> oh my gosh. The Neiman Marcus Cafe. Have we talked about this already? How it's yeah. like this secret wonderful place yes and especially the one at the topanga mall in uh woodland hills it's like you're eating in a waterfall it has this outdoor oasis yeah and we didn't even plan to go there but then you walk past neiman marcus and you're like oh i know it's hiding back there i guess we need one of those little pop pop muffins what are those called popovs <laughs> they're called something nice popovs are you talking about the roll <laughs> that's made out of eggs yes mm. and they gave you chicken broth mm. Mm. strawberry butter mm. delish uh, so we were shopping for other people. It was like my shopping trip to do my Christmas shopping. And I ended up shopping a lot for myself, but I needed clothes. Yeah. And so I came down this morning. I was like, which one should I wear today? And Lizzie's like, well, I want to wear that one. So now we're both, <laughs> and we walk into the shed and Chris is like, is this sponsored by, oh, I guess they are two different beer brands at yeah. least. I'm representing Budweiser today because I am uh, the woman of the people. And I'm representing Miller Lite. These shirts are so soft yes. and so cute though. So cute though. Like, I don't even care that it's like a beer product. I just thought it was so cute for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a great fun day at the mall i get home i literally like shane orders dinner from tender grains which were oh we like eat tender grains so often yeah two hours later i'm like oh something's not right like it feels like i've got a baby kicking me inside of there like really like mm -hmm. jabbing my insides out and then I go upstairs. I was like, Shane, I feel so nauseous. Like, this is so wild. I, I like am unwell. I need to go to the bedroom and just be alone. Two hours after that, I'm violently throwing up. Oh, God. Like, so aggressively. I have never. This is, I don't know if there needs to be a trigger warning for this, but it's I'm, like. I'm triggered. Oh, my gosh. I have never. It's never been so violent for me in my what, life. What was violent about it? everything the oh way it was God. coming up yeah. the way that after there was nothing else to give that my stomach was shaking? just like coming from the inside out like i thought i was gonna prolapse from my mouth <laughs> <laughs> and at one point i like then called shane after the first round and i was like hey it's not good up here <laughs> <laughs> and so then Shane like gets very scared about health things and he runs upstairs and I was like, oh, it's coming again. You need to leave. You can't see me like this. And I don't think I can do this around you. And so he's like, but I want to be here in case you're like choking on what's coming up yeah. because it was so violent. And I was like, no, I need you to exit the room. You didn't want to rub your back and hold your hair. I didn't. I, I couldn't 
have anyone around me in that yeah. moment because it was like so violent and then he like hours later he was like i just stood at the bottom of the stairs and listened to you to make sure that you were gonna choke <laughs> oh, on what Shane. was coming out god damn that's so sweet buddy but you know when you get food poisoning you like think back to like s one of the items of food and you get just like shivers in your body because you know because you know yeah and i'm like 1000 percent sure it was the spinach it was like salmon yeah. spinach and a few potatoes and they had put a lot of spinach that night Ugh. and i feel like whatever happened to the spinach was not right i do think that greens are often a source of e coli which is food sickness maybe i, I don't know so. what i'm saying like i'm a fucking doctor but i did i woke up to text text message from you like i'm vomiting violently and a text message from shane hi did you happen to get sick i think ryland has food poisoning and it's like guys if i was sick you'd know already <laughs> Well, yeah, because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't because everything else that I ate that day had been with you. And like, we had exactly the same thing. Exactly. All day. Yeah, we actually split our meals. I think every meal. Yeah. yeah. So then, and because I got that nauseous feeling when I thought about the spinach from Tender Greens. It's the I, spinach. And I was like, should I call Tender Greens and just let, because I don't think it's like their, the establishment's fault. Like no, you're but ordering you should spinach call and, let them and know. just be like, hey, but I was so violently sick for so many days that I like didn't even have the energy to do right. that. And the problem with food poisoning for me <laughs> is <laughs> Stupid. that like... I'm so heavily addicted to caffeine that then I was having caffeine withdrawals. Right. So then I was having a headache because I couldn't consume the caffeine. And then I was so hungry because I couldn't eat that it was like the biggest migraine of my life because I couldn't consume anything. Oh, God. And then once I was able to start eating again, it was the craziest bloating and indigestion. It would just like sit Ugh. at the top of my body. Well, also tell the people what you decided to eat for your first meal. Well, this wasn't my first meal. Oh. So... We go days later, and I had this false out day where I was like, oh, everything's good. It's chill. I like false out? This false out. Got it. This okay. fake out of like got a it, happy, it, healthy it, day it, where it, everything it, had passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I was no longer throwing up, but I was like, okay, I'm out of the woods. And so Friday when we shot Shane's podcast, I was feeling great. I was happy. I was healthy. And then after it, I really hadn't eaten anything of substance. I was eating very small things like a banana here and there and some like rice and some plain chicken. And after Shane's podcast, I was starving. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but I was like, I just want Taco Bell so bad. Like, I'm finally starving. I just want Taco Bell. Psycho. And so I ordered a Mexican pizza and a chalupa. I ate it, and it just immediately sat there, didn't digest. Immediately, And I no. felt like I was going to die again for the next... I didn't throw it up, and I didn't get re-food poisoning from right. that, but I was just But you like, heavily considered it. Oh. <sighs> It was an option. And then when I was Googling it, I was just realizing that, yeah, very common symptoms for up to a few weeks after Ugh. is being nauseous, having indigestion, and feeling super bloated, which I still feel all of the three. Oh. <sighs> Maybe you so should take a probiotic fun. or something. I actually ordered a pro because when I was Googling all this stuff, so my first day on probiotics was yesterday. Ooh. Do I know what it is? No. no. I just went on Amazon <laughs> and got the top rated. I think sometimes yogurt can help. Really? Because mm -hmm. and it's very confusing. Yogurt and pumpkin puree. I when, think when you're googling, it's like don't have dairy, not high in fiber foods. But then it's like I'm so constipated because I'm not eating anything. So then everything that's in my body. Why wouldn't just you have sitting. high in fiber foods? I don't know. But then they're like you can have oatmeal, which does. It's like very conflicting on what yeah. is safe to eat afterwards. Right. And I just had to dip back into coffee because I can't live with a migraine. No, that's insane. Those withdrawals are too much for me. Oof. I'm an addict. Oof. I'm an addict. <laughs> well, this is your intervention. Um, Just kidding. None of us want to deal with you with that caffeine. Thank God. Yeah, poor Shane. Thank God, though, that he had set up that little theater in his office <laughs> because we have been I've just been like sitting there and just existing right there. It's a nice place to exist. We watched an, a nice little movie. Have you ever seen World War Z? Probably super old. Of course. I have nightmares about it all the time. It was incredible. Yeah, it's and really it great. And it really made me afraid to be a parent. Do you want to? Duh, dude. It's like, a gnarly thing to have kids. I really, for the first time, felt like, like you this need a overwhelming panic room in this bitch. amount of anxiety. Because if the world starts ending and I have to like be Brad Pitt, I don't know if I can be Brad Pitt. You're <laughs> never going to be asked to be Brad Pitt, but you are going to have to fend for your family. And that's just as terrifying, you know? <laughs> um, but I think about that all the time. It's fucking terrifying. Mm. And people laugh at preppers. It's like, why? 
Uh, oh, preppers. They probably sleep well at night. Pro- I mean, maybe. Yeah. But I don't I don't know if you haven't seen it. It's a good movie. I woke up the next morning thinking about it, too. I was like, damn, that was really great. Yeah. If some if shit's going down, get to Israel. Well, that then it didn't work out either. They right. ended up invading. Yeah. That, well, but... you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh. oh, no, it's a, like a 20 year old movie. But what's Speaking interesting? Of spoiler alerts. Hold on. Can oh. I talk about World War Z? Okay. Yeah. God, <laughs> great movie. Great movie. Initially, World War Z, the first cut was absolute trash, fire, horrible, made no fucking sense. How did Everybody... you see it? I, I... let me finish. Okay. <laughs> Everybody hated it. And this is like, wow, this is known around amongst people who have been aware of the film since it came out i guess which is when could you look chris yeah. like the 2000s maybe okay. well i just discovered it <sighs> anyway and then they hired people to come on and rewrite it and they rewrote it reshot some of it and it came out amazing wow yeah it's a good one. I can't watch it without having nightmares, though. No, and it really did like it fucks my shit. It up. really did yeah. make me very anxious. Yeah, you know, two thousand and thirteen. I'm only ten years behind. That's good for me. <laughs> that is good for you. You did that just is... discover Julia Roberts too. <laughs> I just discovered she had twins as well. Oh my god! Is that crazy or what? <laughs> That's nuts. Wow. Wild. I just la 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 love her. Today's podcast is sponsored by Rocket Money, and if you don't know, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. I am so in love with Rocket Money. Let me just tell you, I have always struggled to know like exactly what's coming into my bank account and what's going out. I get a weekly report sent to me from Rocket Money, and if I spend something that seems alarming, they send me an alert to my phone that is just magnificent. I've never felt more in control of my finances. Something that's super special is I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap of a button. I never have to get on the phone with customer service, and they'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate a lower rate for your bills by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped its members save on average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash sip. That's rocketmoney.com slash sip, rocketmoney.com slash sip. Your holiday deals are here on DoorDash. From December 1st to December 12th, deck your doorstep with the season's biggest savings on gifts, groceries, meals, and more at a price you want because DoorDash is offering 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15. That is incredible. So make DoorDash your secret weapon for holiday savings. You skip that in-store rush and enjoy deals on holiday essentials delivered from the best of your neighborhood. Get items on your gift list, the grocery list, and then some all in one app. I use DoorDash for literally everything. On this podcast today, instead of waking up super early and stressing myself out, I just had the Krispy Kreme donuts delivered with DoorDash. And if you're looking to save even more as a Dash Pass member, you can also enjoy exclusive offers and perks all season long. You'll get a $0 delivery fee and reduced service fees on eligible orders too. These deals just started, but they won't last long. Shop holiday savings on DoorDash now. Use code SIPHOLIDAY to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or select retail stores on DoorDash. Terms apply. Oh, I guess you can talk about your TikToks that you send me constantly, which is a burden in of itself. The the, the the length of TikToks that she sends me is so demanding of my time that it's almost insulting. You know what? I'll give you that. You never have to watch a TikTok I send you because I'm the same way. People will just keep sending me stuff and then it's like, guys, if I watch all of this, I'm spending like four hours on my phone watching all of them and I do feel like I have to watch them all because I know that you've spent time curating what you're sending to me. Well, and the problem is when you start sending them to me, there's like six, and then I have to go to my messages, click on that, and then I have to see the one that's playing before, before the next one loads. And then I, it's like, it it's takes- It's a job. It's, it's a full-time it, job being entertained by me. I get it, sister. <laughs> but this was just, um, this one that I sent you was probably a good one. Cause I don't know that it was. It, it didn't no, it, keep my attention. Because you're a fucking idiot and you don't know what it is. It, do you know about Elf on the Shelf? I mean, I- I think you taught you taught me about it last For someone year. who's going to do Santa with their kids, you should get down with Elf on a Shelf because all the other kids are also doing Elf on a Shelf. Okay. And each family, there's uh, Santa assigns a specific elf to keep a close eye on the children to make sure they're being good. And the children cannot touch the elf or it kills the magic and it kills the elf. 
there's a bunch of videos of children who are holding the elves screaming, crying, like, oh, it's dead! The magic is dead! And it's like... And they did it to themselves? They know... Well, it's like a smaller child in the house picks up the elf and kills the magic. Oh, and then the older sibling is yeah, like, it's like you've ruined kids are lives. fleeing the room, screaming, crying. <laughs> She's in her hands! It's in her hands! <clears throat> Anyways, this was a... Like, every year, the elf goes away after Christmas and then comes back during December. And it's... Uh, keeps an eye out until Christmas so you better watch out or your elf is going to report to Santa that you should be on the naughty list and no fucking presents for you game over bitch so it's very smart parenting just to keep your kids in check it is and then it isn't because parents have decided to make every night the elf gets into mischief so every night the elf does some fuckery around the house that like which is interesting because he's supposed to make sure the kids are being good but then he's the naughty thing can i get an example i've sent you fucking tiktoks uh, with examples it was literally like a minute and a half long tiktok Let of this person talking Here's an example. And i was like no it wasn't a fucking tiktok of people talking it was so boring this is the best re-entry of an elf i've ever seen this family had the police come to the house knock on the door ask to talk to the daughter and they go we found this guy trying to break into this address do you know this address she goes that's my old house we just moved out of that house and they're like well there's this guy crackle and he's in the back of our squad car right now and we found him trying to break into this house but they're doing it in full cop mode and there's nothing like they're not it's not a joke like they're like fully committed to cop mode of like can you step out here can you put some shoes on please put some shoes on you do you know do you know an elf named crackle Come here, come here. We're going to have to show you this off. And in the back of the squad car, there's literally like four squad cars in front of this pre- these people's house with their lights going off. And it's like, and it's the cop knock at the Is door. Is their uncle a cop or something? I mean, he must be. But they open the back of the squad car. And there's the elf and the little girl starts crying. It's crackle. It's crackle. And the, when, every time the little girl leaves the room, the, the cops talk to the mom. They go, so can we touch it? Like, who can touch it? <laughs> what happens if we touch it? Does the magic die? Like, it's like, it's really sweet. I'm trying to understand the tie-in of like the elf doing bad things. I don't get it. It's just what it is. But the ba- <laughs> but the elf like one of the bad things that'll do is like while the kids are sleeping, the uh, elf will draw like glasses on their face, and like little mustaches on their faces, and then they'll the parents will the elf will sit down and like have the marker in its hand, and then when the kids go to look in the mirror in the morning, they've got these dumb faces. And another one I've seen is the elf will paint the dad's toenails. That's cute. And then another one I saw is like the elf will paint on the mirror so that when you look in the mirror, you look like you're wearing the elf outfit. Can we acknowledge that TikTok is a bunch of information that doesn't actually matter in the real world? Yeah. And that it's definitely making me <laughs> depressed and anxious. Absolutely. Yeah. I- <laughs> and that it's probably China trying to mind control us and ruin our country. For well, sure. <laughs> it's just interesting because it's like things that they're telling you that's like trending, but you've missed the trend, but the trend hasn't happened yet. And it's like, well, I can no, spend the, two hours the scrolling. The elf trend has been happening for well, years. No, but I'm just talking in general. Yeah. That it's just like. It's stupid. It's not healthy for anyone. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. But the elf stuff is cute. <laughs> um, I feel so re-energized uh-huh. because as I was watching my vlog that Shane so generously helped me cut. He was like, I think you need to drag Lizzie for once. Yeah, because I stumbled over a word and didn't correct it. I know no, it's hibernation. You, you didn't you stumble. You delivered bitch. it very matter of fact. No, I didn't. I said, I what are you going to decorate? Morning. What are you going to decorate? Oh, funny that you watched it this morning, but didn't know where the decoration that you asked from my house Never mind. This is too confusing for everyone. <laughs> yeah. You acted like you watched my vlog and then you asked me a no, question I was that my do- vlog but answers. But I was also doing my makeup. Right. Okay. And, and I was also editing my vlog. I was editing my vlog, doing my makeup, and eating my breakfast. The craziest okay? thing about Lizzie is I'll FaceTime her and she's editing her video with a movie playing in on full volume While in the background. reading a book. I'm the most interesting woman <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I'm just like, how? How? I need like a dead silent room. And if I hear people talking in the other room, I'm like, could they shut up, please? Maybe that's why your <laughs> views are better than mine. <laughs> no we just know it's because people don't like me and it's fine no people love you where are they um okay so lizzie was talking about her christmas decorations yes uh and instead of saying how oh, i'm gonna get my decorations out that are hibernating wherever she said hibernation yeah i stumbled over a word and no. didn't correct it no, no, and i leaned into no, no, it with confidence no, no, no. because i'm that bitch okay <laughs> Remember, I had a fortune cookie that said I can admit when I'm wrong. And right now, I'm not wrong, so I'm not going to admit it. What did you do recently <laughs> that I was like, can you please admit that you're wrong? And you were doubling down. <laughs> I and was you're probably acting wrong. like you weren't. <laughs> yeah, probably wrong. Yeah, definitely wrong. <laughs> um, I guess we need to let everyone know that we're going to be leaving soon. 
Oh, like for for a little while? Yeah. For my, what do they call it for men? Paternity leave. Oh yeah, I'm going on paternity leave. Daddy's going on paternity leave. Which lucky for everyone, honestly, I, I, me acting like this podcast is so important. <laughs> uh, it does happen to fall during the two weeks that we already usually take off. Yeah. So that like kind of works out because we always take two weeks off for the holidays. Yeah. So we're extending it to at least four weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see if I'm a functioning adult. And if I'm not, either you guys are going to have to execute or there's going to be no podcast for a while. Oh. I think I think Chris and I are definitely capable of executing. But I also think we've been doing this podcast for three years as dysfunctional adults. What do you mean? You don't have to be functioning. That's my <laughs> <laughs> There's no pressure right, to function here. I have function. To <laughs> don't tell Shane. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> functioning. Let me correct myself because I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, this is a safe space nobody has to function here well the the <laughs> recording of the podcast isn't the problem it's really the post-production thumbnailing figuring out the title because i think thumbnailing and figuring out the title might be the hardest thing of all videos well it definitely is and none it, of and like for some reason everyone's like we can't just use what youtube generates we have to make this harder <laughs> and that is my problem is i can't just uh hand that over to you because that i can barely hand that over to, hand to over myself to yeah like we don't want the channel just to go into the yeah i don't think chris's thumbnails are bad i think chris makes a solid thumbnail he did make it yeah when you guys did your thumbnail he did make a good thumbnail and as much as i bitch about it i was thinking this morning if i have to i will drag this motherfucker to fast food restaurants and eat some nasty shit on the po and you will yeah, and i'll cut angles because i'm happy to edit i'm good at editing okay I'm just not good at thumbnails. Because I can probably drag titles. myself out here for one hour during yeah. recording. I just don't know that I'll be able to turn it around. I'd want to edit it on your computer, though. That's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, there's our plan, guys. Um, but see we, see so, you in four weeks. Well, right now. No, 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 no. We <laughs> no have, next week. We have we this next episode, week. and we have next week episode uh, given, or if my kids don't decide that they need to come out this week Prior for to, some reason. Yeah. So this is just like the safety. This is our precaution Letting yeah. you know if we're not here next week, it's because there's two little fucking babies here. Yeah. That I want to hold immediately. And if we are here next week, that means the babies are still happy inside. Yeah, so, but they're fully cooked. I mean, technically, yes. And they're big boys. They're like, big. What are they now? I don't know what their weight is now, but a few weeks ago, they were five and six pounds, which is a lot bigger than even most like single babies, like mid-range do you mind checking your app and seeing what they the app says the size is because i he has this app where it's like every thursday it tells him what size the babies are so right now it says like average for this for 35 weeks is well it's almost 36 weeks am i stupid or has it been butternut squash for months i feel like they've reused that before yeah like <laughs> but it says the like the the average weight right now is 4.75 and you're a few at, weeks ago they were five and six so you're probably at seven and eight now I mean, I don't know how... Ra I guess they say on average Is at this math? point they gain a half a pound a week. Or six and seven. Or it's a pound a week. Don't ask I don't us. Know. I don't even know what a pound is, you guys. <laughs> um, but they're big boys. So I think even if they were to come... Oh, so um come a little earlier than is planned they're cooked they're 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 hard -boiled. they're mostly cooked yeah. yeah and there has been not like a few scares but she's gone our surrogate has gone in a couple of times outside of her regularly scheduled appointments and she is going in with because with twins it is considered a high risk pregnancy mm -hmm. um so she does not at this stage in the game she goes in every single week for like an hour non-stress test just to make sure all the fluids are good that they're happy and healthy and there was one point last week where during the non-stress test the the nurse or I, i'm not sure who does that the, like the ultrasound for that mm -hmm. was like one of the babies isn't happy and i was like oh my gosh i gotta go to seattle and today also and so they had sent her to labor and delivery just to like get further checking and then once they got into there they were like oh one of them was just in a deep sleep everything's <laughs> fine but it like was so scary and i was like oh my gosh it's all happening right now so even though we have a scheduled date at this point it literally do you have your go bag packed? Be, uh, no, I think I need to do that today. I yeah. finally like executed on the very last things I needed for the nursery, like non-essentials, but like, well, I guess it's kind of essential, but like a laundry basket, like all of the final things I didn't have. Um, so it's any time now. But um, our current plan is this episode, next week's episode, and then gone for four weeks. And I think 
were currently slated to come back. What date did we decide? It's two weeks. It was like the fifteenth to the fifteenth. Yeah. So maybe January seventeenth, um, if I'm alive and well. And if I'm not alive and well, then maybe Lizzie and Chris will execute an episode. If we're too alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> but that's our plan for now. Um do you think it's a bad idea for me to talk about my revelation? About my due date revelation? Oh, I, I mean, it's a little odd. So leave it out. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's just so Lizzie. Like, it's so... I guess... I mean, it's you. If you want to share this, it's on you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. I was looking for guidance from a father figure. I'm hot with anxiety now, and I was having a good day. She was. I walked the dogs earlier this morning, and as I was getting back with the dogs, she was rolling up with her windows down, just blasting Taylor Swift, singing at the top of her lungs. I was like, damn, she ain't mad today. You can hear it in the silence. No fights with your husband this morning? No. Wow. (laughs) What happened this morning? I woke up. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Which is awful for him. He was there again. He hates when I wake up. He's like, are you waking up? Yep. Well, I guess I will too then. It's like, well, no, you don't. You don't have to. You've got a fan, nightmare music, door shut. I'm not nightmare music. Music. We sleep with nightmare music on every night. You You guys are sick and twisted. (laughs) Like, and I still can't get over him drying pans with this fucking uh, stove on. Bro, that shit is so. We don't need to go back there. I also like woke up and I was like, I'm gonna stop talking shit about my husband in public today. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I I brought this. I can't stop. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My new response to him is when he like shits on a system of how we do things. He goes, "This system sucks." I'm sure it does. (laughs) He says, "We need a new system for this." I go, "Okay." And that's it. I thought I was being robbed last night because this cup reminded me of this. Can you hand me this cup? Last night, I was slumbering. I was in a deep, (laughs) nice sleep. And my husband, he turns the alarm off and I didn't hear that part. But then Riley starts barking violently and I start hearing the door opening. (gasps) And I was like, what the fuck? Why would the door be opening right now unless I'm being killed? Like somebody's coming in and killing me. And Shane's been like sitting in the movie in the movie theater, which like I can't hear anything on that side yeah. of the house. Like it's a good distance away, and like I could die. Yeah. And he would never know never if he's know. sitting up there in the theater. <laughs> and I didn't think he'd move from that theater. We were like wrapped for the night. We were done watching Paris in Love. Everything was over, and. I I like start looking at all the security cameras and all the lights are up, which means the motion detector in the yards going off. I'm hearing the noises downstairs and I'm like, oh my God, I'm being robbed. And Riley's barking. I call him. He doesn't answer. I'm naked. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk downstairs and get murdered nude. Naked, of course. And I don't have time to put pants on because I don't know where my pants are. Honestly, I think running down naked is probably a really good approach. (laughs) Like you're more vulnerable, but you're also crazy. (laughs) Like... (laughs) And then he calls me back and he's like, oh yeah, that's just me. But I turned the alarm off. I'm like, you fucking asshole. Now I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep. He's like, I just needed the roadcaster from the shed to record my podcast ads. I was like, why do you need to do that at 1 a.m.? Oh my why do you God. need to do that at 1 a.m.? Now I'm having a heart attack. I have to wake up and record my podcast. And I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep now because my adrenaline is through the roof. Yeah. And now this motherfucker, I get in this podcast shed today. He forgot his drink that's probably still cold because it's in you a Stanley. You can hear the ice. The I- wow. That's a good ad for the Stanley Cup. No, there's an even better ad for the Stanley Cup. What is... Oh, did we talk... No, that wasn't on this podcast. Is it okay if I talk about it on this podcast? Yeah. Um, There was a woman who had her Stanley Cup in her car and her car caught fire. Like, literally, the whole car is fucked. I saw this on TikTok. And she picks up the fucking stanley cup which is scorched because the whole car is like ash and she shakes it still ice inside the owner of the stanley company gave her a new car that is so crazy they also made it very clear that they will only be doing this one time so (laughs) no insurance fraud yeah insurance fraud yeah but then shane made a really good point on the shane dawson podcast that he has yet to buy someone a new house after it burns down with a stanley cup in it so I guess there's always that. There is always that. <laughs> um, so yeah, then today his his one and only, not one and only, but his favorite cups in here, and I almost just want to leave it in here. Do I it. Don't know where Do your it. cup went. I don't know where your cup went. I don't know. Why don't you know where your cup went? 
That's what I want to know. <laughs> okay, so I've been steamrolling with my stories, but you did put a lot of stories that I was like, do these need to be in the document? Some of them. Are like, you jealous? No, no, no. I just sounds wanna, like you're jealous. I just want to give you one of Lizzie's headlines, and uh, you guys can decide <laughs> if it needs like a really like to be a segment on the podcast. So <laughs> the guy whose update was that he saw World War Z. No, that for the fucking record. No, 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 no. That was just no, no, no. no. That, that was just a movie that came out ten years ago no. that I saw for the first time and needed to let everybody know about. That that was a subplot in my recovery of food poisoning, being thankful that my husband had built a theater. Oh. This is just a standalone. Lizzie cuddled with my dogs for three hours yesterday. My dogs. He well, that's how you wrote it. Lizzie cuddled with my dogs. That's on you. <laughs> and the way I know that I always talk about this, but like the way you organize a document, first of all, this was all highlighted green. It was all bold. No separation from topic to topic. And then she has in Hot Topics, you can't tell like what's a link and what's not a link. Yes, and then you can. She does a Taylor Swift story, two more stories, and then another Taylor Swift story. <laughs> Any logical per because person? Because I, I do news every day. I, I know, drop but, docs every day, bro. Okay. I'd be dropping but docs, why, bro. If you already know there's a Taylor story <laughs> on it. Why can't you put the Taylor story together? Because I'm together? doing it all on my fucking We're phone. Never gonna, You've seen me struggle. We're, You've seen, you know my hardships. <laughs> you have a laptop. That I can't use for things like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. I do this in bed before I get up in the morning. Okay. Okay. Thank I could you. Not, I could not do it Thank at you. all. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you can say hello to a stressless holiday season. You skip those grocery stores and save time with easy, tasty recipes that are delivered right to your doorstep. You all know after a full day of work, there's still so much to do, especially this time of year. And some days it feels like eating a wholesome dinner is next to impossible. But with HelloFresh, you can turn busy weeknights into memorable meal times with delicious, practical options designed to save you time like their 15 minute meals. And HelloFresh isn't just about dinners. They also have easy breakfasts to start your morning off right to 10 minute lunches or even satisfying snacks that both adults and kids will love. And they have over 45 recipes and more than 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every single week. There's nothing better than walking into the kitchen and knowing there is a delicious, easy to make healthy meal for me. All thanks to HelloFresh and they do make this busy time of the year a lot less stressful for me. So go to HelloFresh.com slash the sip free and use code the sip free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash the sip free with code the sip free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Today's podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. And I know you've been there on the hunt for a new doctor. It's so taxing and takes so much time. You ask everyone you know for their recommendation for a doctor who gets you, will listen to you, makes you feel comfortable, and after weeks of searching, you finally find the right one, and you get to talking to the receptionist, and they don't take your insurance. Well, you could wipe your tears and head over to ZocDoc, the perfect solution to find and book a doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, who are located right near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These doctors all have verified reviews from real, actual patients, not bots, and the average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 to 48 hours. That's it, and you can even score same-day appointments. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few taps, no more awkwardly waiting on hold with a receptionist. I'm so in love with ZocDoc. I have used it on so many occasions, especially traveling back and forth between two different places to find people that take your insurance. ZocDoc is the best. So go to ZocDoc.com slash the sip and download the ZocDoc app for free, then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash the sip. ZocDoc.com slash the sip. Now, are there, is there anything here that you need to talk about? Well, do you want me to confess to how I did you dirty or do you just want to live knowing that I've wronged you? Do I know about it? Nope. I kept my mouth shut about it. Oh, Ooh. there was something on a text that you were like, I was nasty and wrong about you. Is that this? No. What is it? You tell me and maybe it will. You're going to be like, I've got butterflies about having to tell you this. What? Yeah, I'm really nervous about it. What did it. you do? I'm harboring a secret. <gasps> You're pregnant. No, I wish. Oh, that was sorry. mean of me. No, I'm it's sorry. okay. Oh, I never told you. I never fall finished my story. Was that on purpose? What? Should I not finish my... Mm, I, I think that was God. We're going to leave the duty <laughs> <day> now. <laughs> I, I need you to know that I love you very much. 
What did you do? And I need you to know that I intentionally with abstained from certain activities while I was doing this thing to save them for you and I, even though I wanted to do the things. Okay. So you were in my mind and my heart. What did you do? I went to Universal Studios. What the fuck? I know, dude. <laughs> what? I know, dude. And you hit it? I did. What? I'm so Who sorry. Who did you go with? I went with Joe. <gasps> Oh, I'm crying. How fun was it? It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's how come I knew they had Who villain Christmas decorations and Max and the Grinch and Grinch snacks. And Shane sent me a reel of people going to what do they call it? Whoville? Is that is it? No, it's like Grinch. I, they That's have a Whoville. name, Grinchmas. Yeah, it's is that Grinchmas. Yeah, and it looks so fun. It's beautiful. And did you try all the things? No. Did you That's vlog what it? I no. <gasps> I abstained from trying all the things. I did not get in line to meet the Grinch, and I didn't even look at Max head on. I just looked at him from the back because I felt bad about what I was doing. Oh. And the whole time I told Joe, I was like, do you think Rylan's going to check my location and know where I am? That's like, crazy. He was like, I just tell him, just tell him we're at City Walk. And I was like, I mean, you've seen my location. It's pretty clear about where I am. It'll probably tell him we're in Harry Potter world right now. And then he'll know. He'll know we're in here. Is it in Harry Potter? Where is Grinch? No, Miss? it's on the way. It's directly on the way in. So... Well, a couple of things. Oh. <laughs> I'll forgive you, but Joe and I have come a long way. <laughs> I have since FaceTimed Lizzie, and Joe and I had like a little bonding moment over FaceTime, I would say. I would agree. You would? Yeah. Until you were nasty at the end. <laughs> I was a little nasty at the Joe end. Joe and I had this sweet, cute moment, and then she, she ended it with like his zinger towards I, me I did. and i was like in front of him i know you want to remind him of the trauma i know did he say anything he afterwards? did not thank god okay but what is funny is i went to a dinner with my um god mom's family and one of them kept saying give joe a hug and she goes i gave him a two-armed hug <laughs> and joe wasn't getting it and honestly i wasn't getting it for a minute she goes because you know how he hugs island <laughs> how <laughs> ryland hugs she goes i give two-armed hugs <laughs> yeah the shade New Romantics Mind Shift. Oh, that's why I was in a good mood this morning. I was listening to Taylor's New Romantics, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to build a freaking castle with all the bricks you have thrown at me. Who? The world. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to take them bricks, girl, and I'm going to build me a castle, and it's going to be lit as fuck, and you can't come. The world. The <laughs> <laughs> at the world. <laughs> taking Hella. Oh, this is my other prenatal update. I've been taking prenatal vitamins because something that a doctor told me that would help is to help conceive is to take prenatal vitamins. And in my mind, I was like, oh, great. My hair is going to be on point. My nails are going to be lit as fuck. My skin's going to be glowing. I have never had more fucking acne. My nails are fucked. Someone in the comment section said my nails were disgusting. They're not disgusting. They're just fucked. They're clean as hell. They're just fucked. She's a woman who works with her hands. Leave her Bitch. be. I got nasty in the comment section this last week. That's fine. Okay. I, I haven't actually looked yet. I called someone a bitch. Okay. <laughs> but it was the person who said that my nails were disgusting. I, or my nails were... You used salty. like B-I-T-C-H? Yeah, I said they're clean, bitch. Or something like that. It was gnarly. How are people lately? Are they nice to us again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> what did they think about my middle part they hate it really yeah and i didn't want to tell you i didn't want to tell you that wow. i wasn't even going to throw that in your face this hurts but i'm not people are tagging me in pictures of you in your center part <laughs> <laughs> and i that's why i'm wondering if you can see it wow that's why i asked can you see it wow some people like it because there's something about it that's like Oh, it's like a 90s boy band thing. Like, it's mm -hmm. that's cute. Like, it's like K pop. It's like great. Right. Whatever. So, it's just not for me. And I'm now just, I feel awful about it. I, I feel like I just watched uh, the light go out in your eyes. No, I have good days and I have bad days. <laughs> <laughs> some days my hair just wants to work and some days it doesn't. Listen, and I, I, I just feel like with long hair, you need to be equipped with how to style it. Yes. And I'm not there yet, but I'm watching guys on Instagram that know how to do their hair. Start watching some short haired lesbians okay and i will say this like my skin is fucked and my hair is looking like some stringy eileen warnos fucking nasty bitch shit so we are in this together thank you bad hair girls unite thanks hello girls just jumping in to tell you if you want to skip the taste test if you're listening on audio or you just don't like the chewing sounds skip to 47 25. um okay <laughs> let's get into this fun taste test because <gasps> finally the crispy creams are available for me to get on doordash which 
I don't know if DoorDash is sponsoring today's episode of the podcast, but they've sponsored us a lot. So I'll leave our, their code in the description section below. But oh my gorgeous. Look at this. And this is Elf the film, oh. the Christmas movie, not Elf the beauty products. Oh. If some of you are confused. Oh my God, I can smell it from here. It does smell pretty good. That smells so good. So good. Oh my gosh, shit. it smells so good. Do you look gorgeous? <laughs> Do I you? bet you do. I think it's fine. Do you want to part your hair down the center first? Take your hat off. Chris your always hair? is look. Well, you don't have your hair out today, but how often do you get a haircut? Because you come for the Shane Dawson podcast, and I'm like, damn, that's fresh. I only do it for the Shane Dawson podcast. So it's every week. I never get my haircut when I don't have to be on camera. Because it's like <laughs> his like fade is so like beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow, Krispy Kreme smells delicious. It does. I am worried for my stomach. I think we should spit it out. <laughs> I don't think we should be swallowing this. <gasps> There is a huge Krispy Kreme bag over there. Okay, here we go. Wow, I'm letting them see before. These are gorgeous. Those are hella cute. This might even be worth getting sick over. I don't know about that. Oh my gosh. Wow. They're even more gorgeous. Oh my God, do you get it? That's like spaghetti. Oh! So I bet the glaze no. on top of that bitch is maple. I might be spitting these because... Oh, then I'm not going to hold it on my lap. Not because I don't want it, but because I'm fearful of being nauseous for 24 more hours. Same. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am. It makes okay. me sick. Which one should we try first? Probably... Well, what is... The, are these just regular? That's just regular. You so know that for a fact? I mean, they look regular. Yeah, but we could be wrong. What's that? <gasps> wow, it's so I cute. I think it's filled with cookies and cream. <gasps> I love cookies and cream. Wow, and the box and the branding is so good. I almost want to <laughs> open it up. Yeah, split it, Daddy. Oh. Oh, wow. It is very, like, it's dense. They've in been there. filling it with frosting lately, which is kind of a bummer for me. Wow, it's not a cream. It is like a solid. Remember oh. when we got the M&M ones and they were all filled with just straight up frosting? I don't want to ruin it. It's so cute. It is cute. Okay, <laughs> let's take a bite. Mm. Wow, I want to swallow it so bad. Mm. What's the middle part? I think it's cookies and cream. Mm. Wow, I like it. Mm. I don't know if I like the more complex. I, I like it. I would eat it. I think I like the more basic ones, though, like the less fill, fill the ones with filling. Mm -hmm. Filling. Like yeah. a cream filling or a custard filling. filling. I prefer a donut without a filling. Fill Really? I yeah, feel like I'm, well. It's filming. <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> this is the most gorgeous donut I have possibly ever seen. It's Whoa. pretty cute. And I don't really like to overcomplicate my Krispy Kremes because they do what they do so well go, that it's just like incredible. What is the Thank elf? You. Is the elf edible? Here, you take the first bite and then I'll take a bite. Yes. The elf is edible? Mm -hmm. I hope so because wow. I just bit it. <laughs> do you want to take another bite of it? Of the elf? Mm -hmm. Is it white chocolate? I don't know. Mm. That's like a regular, regular regular donut. How does it, um, how did the little beads help? Good texture. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like the blue has a flavor. I think it's just frosting. Mm. That's a great donut. Mm. I love a Krispy Kreme donut. You know, the Santa Belt one isn't it for me. No. Yeah. When you're comparing it to something that Krispy Kreme does well, that is like, that is the gag. This is better for sure. Mm -hmm. I wish they would go back to the custard filling. Do, do they not have? I'm I sure mean, that's the last two times we've done this shit, they've had them filled with frosting and it's just like a little bit too much, guys. Will you grab the chocolate one? We're going to leave the spaghetti for the finale. Damn, I do like the how they're utilizing the white chocolate to make like the elf or the little. You think that's white chocolate? I think it's white chocolate. It doesn't taste like white chocolate to me. Maybe it's like um mm, fondant. <laughs> or what's that thing that you melt to like do? That's, I think that's white chocolate. I think it is chocolate. <laughs> I definitely think it's chocolate. It's just so thin. Oh, chocolate covered glazed donut. That is going to be my wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> mm. These are really like visually nice. They're so pretty. I do like the chocolate better than the frosting. They're all a bit much for me. And I've swallowed every bite. Yeah. I would... <laughs> would you prefer just the plain 
Or is that even too sweet? Are you just not a dessert girl? I am definitely not a fucking dessert girl. No. <laughs> And I feel like I say it every goddamn week. I'm a savory bitch. I guess that's true because when we went to Jack in the Box, you really did actually participate yeah. with us. And everyone's like, she hates everything. It's like, then you you come and eat a whole fucking box of donuts, bro. <laughs> How did that one rank, rank for you? That was my least favorite. Really? Honestly, yeah. for me too. So far, I like the blue one the best. Yeah. They're so sweet, it actually burns the back of my throat. No. <laughs> You can't take Lizzie's take on this, though, because she's not a sweets girl. That's true. Oh, wow. What? Oh, my God. What's everyone's favorite Christmas movie? Elf is one of my favorites. Like, genuinely. Elf is amazing. I, I love Die Hard. <laughs> of course. Oh, sorry. I love Krampus. Oh. <laughs> I think I just love, like, traditional Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Oh, fuck me too. That's it's a good like one for me. It's like so good. That is incredible. So this donut doesn't have a hole. <gasps> really? I think Let it's me to see. support the skinny. Prove it. Oh my God. The donut holes. Yeah. Whoa. This yeah. is so funny. Here, you Wait, take the first bite of this. Do you always, do they always remove the donut hole? Apparently not. Or do they make the, what? Um, I'm so confused. Oh, you think donut holes are the holes of the donut? Probably. I don't know. And now I'm like questioning everything I ever knew about donuts. I feel like I know nothing. Me too. <laughs> the M&M on top. Wow. Okay, Chris, let's go in. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That's a lot of frosting. Mm -hmm. You don't want it? I don't <laughs> want it. I'm so sorry. I'll do it for you. You know what I'll say? It's it's too much frosting. It looks better than it tastes. It Visually stunning. But Visually, too, 10 out of 10. It is too much frosting, but for some reason, I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. No. It's like not bad, actually. I kind of do just want to compare it to a classic Krispy Kreme. It's like, cream. that was so sweet that I feel like a classic glaze is going to is gonna be a nice little breakup. The Ooh. thing with the classic Krispy Kreme, it just like melts even when you touch it. Like you don't even have to put it in your mouth best. for it to melt. It's the best. <laughs> oh I, my God. I like this one more than I thought I would. My headache's kicking in. <laughs> oh my God. A classic Krispy Kreme is worth everything. If you've ever been in a Krispy Kreme, like, where they just made it and you got a fresh batch, that is, like... Incredible. Oh, my God. It's a religious experience. Do you want a regular? Yeah. Just glazed? Oh, yeah. Thank you. I will say this collab is 10 out of 10 to put you in the Christmas spirit. You know? Yeah. Like, if you just want to look at something so pretty... If you really just want the donuts, I'm not going to lie. I would say just get a dozen of classic glazed. Yeah. The glazed are so incredible. It like, oh, it does something to me. Delicious. One take two, Margaret. Uh, yeah, the Hot Topics. You put them in. Did you watch the Twin Flames cult? No. no. Which you would have thought I should have done while I was sick. sick and in bed. But I tried to spend my time catching up on Selling Sunset, which I'm so hot and cold with now. Like, I can't tell if I love it anymore or hate it. It was a massive waste of your time to do that instead of watching the Twin Flames cult. It Was it that good? Yeah. Really? It's fucking wild. And... I I see. It's that almost you... like I don't even like. What's the use of talking about it with someone who hasn't seen it? Okay, so then let's bring this back once. Maybe I'll watch it this week. You should watch that, and you need to we watch the love one, love has one or whatever called. There's two different documentaries. Yeah, and honest to goodness, I'll watch them with you. Okay, <laughs> I'm in. Well, I might save these for when we have the boys, and if I ever have both of them asleep at the same time. No, we should watch it with the boys in the room. Oh, that's fine if they're taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, um, it's so good. Oh, that's a perfect fucking paternity show. Okay. I do always think about that. This isn't a hot topic, but like, I think about shows, like saving shows, like when Haley had her baby, I was like, well, I'm not going to watch that so that I can watch it with Haley when the baby comes. Right. I, I thought it was funny because in my last vlog, I kept being like, oh, well now with the Christmas tree and stuff, we'll get to like sit on and sit on the couch with the babies. And everyone's like, LOL, you thinking you're going to be have time to sit on the couch with the babies. I'm like, I know that there's like more aspects to that, but there is times where they're going to be sleeping or napping in like a crib, a bassinet yeah. or uh, like with me while I'm watching something. Also, newborns are nuggets, bro. Like, where are they going to go? What do you mean? Well, I, if he's not sitting on the couch with them, where the fuck is he with them? It, because they're not, funny. they can't, they're not inchworming around yet right like when we had look like before lily was mobile i used to just carry her from room to room and just like if i need my hands i just put her on the floor because where's she gonna go <laughs> or like wear the baby too like yeah i plan to wear i mean i'm not gonna be able to wear two but yeah i plan to wear a baby um, i plan to also wear one of the babies so we'll be wearing the babies watching twin flames <laughs> yes we will bouncing on a fucking ball and yeah. the babies are gonna love looking at the christmas tree yeah 
I don't plan to take it down for a long time, honestly. No, God, why would you? It's so fucking so magical. Gorgeous. Every time I walk in there, it's just like, ah. Takes my breath away. It yeah. was worth the splurge. You did good. Thanks. Um, okay. So Paris Hilton cloned her dog, Diamond Baby. <laughs> this um, this we, reality show. Paris in Love, we both binged it. Well, I'm not. You're done. Oh, girl, you I'm finished. Done. Yeah, I finished yesterday. Oh, my gosh. While I was cuddling with my three dogs. I would say <laughs> this has kept my and like kept my um attention attention i didn't even text on my phone more than the kardashians yeah i, I couldn't even get through the first episode of this new season of the d'amelios like i'm barely getting through selling sunset and paris and love has me there and it's just because i cannot take my eyes off of it it's like insane not only can i not believe her life but i also can't believe what they're willing to show on camera joe walks through the room while it's playing and he just starts laughing at every sound bite like kathy hilton is such an out of pocket out of touch bitch and i used to so like on the real housewives of beverly hills her sister is like the most prominent figure she's been on for all 12 seasons okay and so kathy dips in and out but kathy hilton and her sister like are always either like like not talking for three years or they're talking again. And I used to think like Kathy's like so fun and energetic and like, I can't believe Kyle can't get along with her, but watching Paris in love, it's shown me a different side of Kathy where I'm like, I, at the beginning of this season, I was like, Oh, Paris is like, I had some weird feelings toward Paris. And then as the season ends, I'm like, oh, she didn't really stand much of a chance right? because of her upbringing. And I love Kathy Hilton, but Kathy and I don't know. It's, it's we're only getting a window into this reality. Yeah, it's definitely like it is hard. There are some things that are very hard to watch her choose to do. Wh- which one? Both of them. Right. You know, I think Kathy might have. I don't know how much money Kathy was born with and how much money Kathy came into as an adult. Right. But I do think like Paris did not stand a chance. And I it concerns me to watch a lot of the choices that she's making with the children she's having. Well, and I'm not, I don't want to be, I don't want to say something nasty about it, but it's just a little bit like, (gasps) I know. And that's why you like, can't believe what you're seeing. And it's like, even, and it's just a different, I think what's also interesting about it. It's like this person with seemingly unlimited funds, like would a lot of people with her sort of money, raise their like have their children seemingly as accessories where it's like oh i have the surrogate do this and like with i think when a lot of people talk like or look down upon like celebrities and surrogates it's like because of the way that paris hilton does it like Mm -hmm. we don't know if she was even infertile she Mm -hmm. was just like being pregnant sounds scary and Mm -hmm. i don't want to be in the delivery room Mm -hmm. even when the surrogate was like do you want to come in the delivery room she's like no and then they like we're ready to bring the baby in and they're like hold on we're setting up all our reality show cameras Mm -hmm. and it's just like a different world and it's not not to say like i mean how everyone does their own thing is Mm -hmm. to their own you're allowed to do whatever you want as morgan Uh, what did morgan say it's your circus run it how you want like good for her um but it's just fascinating and it's like she has probably like three full-time nannies you only see one on the show Uh, But I was like, does that nanny ever get to, like, go to lunch with her family or take a break? And Shane's like, well, yeah, there's probably other nannies. But it's just interesting and it's fascinating. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess in in my world, what Paris chooses to do doesn't uh, impact me or it doesn't impact me. You know what I mean? Like, my life's not changed because of the choices that Paris Hilton's making in her household. So I, I just, like, to that degree, I don't really right my opinion doesn't matter right <laughs> but it's fucking wild dude and it, it is wild like i might have given my dogs more baths than she has given her child oh um, you give your dog a bath like three times a week it's just so two 100 <laughs> percent. but i just thought like the family dynamics is wild yeah. the way like paris can't sad. talk to her family but then like releases the youtube doc- documentary releases the book releases all of these things it's just a fascinating watch yeah. and i can't believe it's not more viral than it is it's it's going pretty viral it's it, all over TikTok. tiktok yeah because it's really crazy well yeah it's, it's really and honestly I know it sounds crazy to say this, but like I genuinely feel kind of bad for these people. 
I think that they're having good lives by their measure, but it's also like... I don't know that she is. She's so anxious. She's so shy. She's so anxious. She And she even says in it, like, I'm not like... Well, she's projecting. constantly disassociated and just going through the motions of all these things. And she's like, I'm so shy that like when I'm shy and nervous, my voice goes really high. And then I'm like such a introvert and I only feel safe in this closet when I'm doing confessionals alone. She throws a party at her house. She's too afraid to walk downstairs or talk to anybody. Yeah. And it is like it's it's I, I don't think she knows any other reality, yeah. but it is kind of sad. It's pretty sad. And I. But I don't know how it's, I don't know. It's it's a wild watch and I would definitely recommend t- taking a view. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think about it and it's like, well, that's the price of billions of dollars. And then it's like, do I want billions of dollars? And it's like, it not- It would be hard to find happiness. I, yeah, yeah. I think if I stumbled into FU money, I probably wouldn't be motivated to work but i think working even though it's sometimes tiring and exhausting also is a big element of my life of your that, purpose that yeah fulfills me because it is like it's a big part of me and it do, you do feel accomplished when you're accomplishing things and it doesn't have to be like one certain thing or another but i do think like having something to do is important not that paris doesn't have things to do she's very busy yeah but it's just it's... they're all things that she asked for like it's like there's a whole plot line through the entire series season where paris has this concert she has to get ready for this concert it's like well no paris has a pretend music career that she self finances and produces for herself and they talk about how when she was a little girl she and nikki used to put on these little concerts and it's like it's the same thing well, and Nikki was even saying like Paris, like you'll this this time with these newborns goes so quickly. Like yeah. you need to like really be here and be present. And she's like, we're planning on taking some time off when they're a little older. And it's like, but you're never gonna get the newborn. You're never gonna get that back. Yeah. But fascinating watch for sure. Prayers for Paris. <laughs> oh, this is another show you didn't watch. They made a real Squid Games. I've never seen actual Squid Games. Yeah. And so is that something I need to watch? I thought it was really cool. And I think you and you might enjoy it. You and Shane might enjoy it. But it's the idea of Squid Games is people with incredible debt are all put into this dormitory and given an opportunity to play child's games to win four million dollars. The kind of money that would change a person's life. Yeah. And um, they they reveal is this in, in actual the, Squid Games or the reality in show? actual Squid Games. You are killed if you do not pass. Okay. So if you fail a test or you fail a challenge, they kill you okay. and you die. In pretend squid games, that's reality TV show squid games. Everybody has a little dart in their t-shirt of ink. And when they die, they pop it and they have to fall to the floor and look like they're dead. Okay. And it's kind of gnarly. But I put the show on, could not look away, could not text her. You FaceTimed me and I even was like, I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> I have never said that to you. I will sit through no fucking service with you going in and out. And I was like, oh my God. Like literally was like, I have to go. Like, It's crazy. And I found out they don't pay the contestants to be on the show. It's only if you win. Yeah, it's all it's or nothing. How much if you win? Four point five six million dollars. Dang. And there's an interesting thing. So it's like there's been all these psychological tests done, like at universities. Like there was the Stanford Prison Experiment, where they put everybody in the dungeons of Stanford, and half the the participants are prison guards, and half the participants are prisoners. And I think it actually turned into a deadly fucking riot, where both the factions of people pretending not even in real life, pretending to be prisoners and prison guards, got into a massive fucking brawl with each other. Mm. And you would assume that in this dynamic, there would also be super toxic power struggles and, uh, you know, weird games being played and cheating and shit going on. But I've, as I've watched every episode but the finale now, you actually see that the people that rose to the top, and it, honestly, it gives me chills. Wow. The people that rose to the top are good people. They're people who have said in a game where we can be spiteful and malicious and I can fuck you and you can ruin my life over four point five million dollars. I've decided to play like a person who can keep their head held high when they get out of the room. With integrity. Yeah, a person with integrity. There is one person who's definitely playing the game and her name is Mai and she is a... Well, no spoilers, please. I might watch this. <laughs> well, it's, well, I'm, no, you can continue. I just don't want to know who's no, like it's in just, the... No, it's just interesting because there are some people who like are definitely playing a game 
and you see how in that a spiteful way you mean i would say that it's not spiteful i would say it's in a way that is compromising their personal morality and their personal integrity for the money and you for the money and you can see how heavy that weighs on them I and it's fucking devastating i'm a big believer in the energy you put out is the energy you'll then receive yeah and like every action you do if it's nasty it's gonna come back to you and you're gonna yeah. be living in a version of whatever you've created for yourself yeah i i too believe in that and I also like to some degree, you know, you see some people making some choices and you're like, all right, they have that coming. And in other worlds, it's like, is this is so fucked because I also think about it. And it's like, yeah, four point five, six million dollars. That would change my life. That would absolutely change my life. Yeah. A, a single house in California is a million dollars, basically. Yes. And that might not even be a nice house in California. No, it's not going to be a nice house in L.A. It's no. not. It's not going to be a good neighborhood. And and then I think about how fucked up it is that when I watch this show as a person who doesn't have millions of dollars, you know, like I have a savings account, but I don't have exorbitant amounts right. of cash. And I watch this and I'm so like, that's not a lot of money. Right. That's a lot of fucking money. But it's like when you think about how it breaks down into ta in specifically America, like well, that's half not... of that's gone for taxes. Yeah, and so you're already at two million. You're already at two million. Then you buy a house for a million dollars, and then you have to pay the property tax on the million dollar house, and then you also have to make the mortgage payments on that house if you don't pay it all in cash. Mm -hmm. But if you pay it all in there's cash, a lot you're of just... closing fees. There's realtor yeah. fees. Then you have to maintain. You have to have like there's and a sometimes lot of property taxes are like fifty thousand fucking dollars a year and maintaining a house everything goes wrong like yeah. everything's going wrong all the time and that's also not only like a, a big job it's very financially it's draining yeah so i that's the sad part you know like you sit back and you think about like all the trials and tribulations they're going through they're really not that bad like they're looking they're licking sugar cakes right you know, <laughs> but it's, you also don't have to move to California, though. You could move no, no, no. somewhere where life yeah. is a little more. Yeah. Uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, four point five million, five, six million dollars is going to go a lot pretty. farther, you girl. It. Yeah. But you, you gotta, invest it well. And, and Tulsa is cute nice as hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do love Tulsa. Yeah. You don't need to be living in L.A. <laughs> no, but that was like that was. And the show, but the show is so well done that I'm literally, I'm also PMSing, so I don't know what to say about that, but I'm <laughs> crying start to finish every episode. I've heard a lot of people, like, not heard, I've seen a lot of, like, people I know posting on their stories about it, so I, I'm I, literally, like, <laughs> I like love that the show. whole episode. I love a show that will make me cry. Dude, I'll rewatch this with you with the babies, too. Okay. Because I, like, I cried a lot through it, so I feel like I must have missed some stuff. We don't have <laughs> much more time, so I would choose your favorite of all of these. Billie Eilish is gay. I did see, well I saw that because you put it in here oh yeah you're welcome and I guess her thing was she just casually like dropped it somewhere she did well, an interview she said queer right so does she yeah. like both she she's, attracted to men I mean and she's women? dated men but she breaks up with them right um but she did a written interview that came out where she was like I'm attract I find the women attractive and I'm intimidated by them and then she did a red carpet interview and where this woman talks to her further and billy goes yeah i guess that was me coming out but i didn't think i had to come out like isn't it obvious right and i love i do love that i love yeah. the we don't come out we just are what we are very gen z which is great i mean it is like uh, that's how it should be mm -hmm. um it's not how it's always been mm -hmm. and it's great to like that somebody's setting an example of like oh we can just exist mm -hmm. um so i love that that's kind of how the world is taking a turn in this way Oh my God, she lost 100,000 followers a after coming out. Where did you see that, Chris? I'll, I'll Google it. Wow. Because like it did the opposite for JoJo Siwa. I feel like her career, right. I mean, she was already a household name, but I feel like she exploded even more so. It is interesting to see like, what audience you curate and how they react to certain things like yeah. every specific person in any realm of entertainment like builds an audience and that audience will not not necessarily pigeonhole them but they like expect a certain i don't know it's, it's very interesting saying. yeah and also ugh, fucking cares let's see what are you really so it's it is like a news story that is reporting that wow that's crazy interesting well i'm sure she doesn't really care no i also feel like really <laughs> like really yeah crazy who fucking cares daily mail i don't know wow yeah who fucking but who fucking cares i don't know 
uh, I guess a hundred thousand people. Oh, I'm Yahoo. sure she'll. <laughs> yeah, who's it? So everyone's picked up the story. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I don't care what kind of nasty shit you're doing in your bedroom. If it's not abusive, it's not a problem. I agree. I was wondering if I want. Oh, I mean, I guess I don't even need to get into this, but it's just interesting to me that, and I haven't done any research. I haven't looked <laughs> at any into any of this except for like I just keep seeing all of the. So like one thing, you know, Balenciaga is ruined and canceled and over. Cut to today. It's like everyone's at the fashion show in Beverly Hills a couple of days ago. Yeah, and now Nicole Kidman is the new face of Balenciaga. Yeah. And all of these massive celebrities. So I'm like, did they like, and I don't know if it was ever necessarily just Balenciaga or the person they hired to execute the photo shoot for Mm -hmm. them. I don't know, but I think it's just fascinating. I'm like, how much money did they have to turn to get all these celebrities to come back to be like the face of, or was all Balenciaga needed was an air one collab which is so and we, that's how they get back in the good graces girls we got a submission to the podcast which is why i brought this up on top of just seeing everyone at is that why kim was uh holding an air one yeah, bag at the, the air one bag even said balenciaga on it oh i saw the funniest thing at my ralph's what? i went shopping and there was a guy in there shopping himself in an air one employee uniform <laughs> And I was like, if that's not a fucking analogy for this world today, I don't know what the fuck is. <laughs> that is fucked up. Honestly, Air One is it's unattainable a for everyone. It's yeah. like, I don't care how rich you are. Nobody should be spending $10 on a loaf of bread. It's absurd. <laughs> it's it's so fucked up. But so this person submitted the email and they were just like, hey, guys, the new fall 2024 line just dropped. Well, they were just saying the Air One drink has launched. And I don't even think it's a smoothie. I just think it's an all black like juice i don't know i don't know what it is honestly i'd like to try it we can let's do it yeah we'll bring it on the podcast just to see what it's like but if all these major brands are working with them again and all these celebrities are on board i think it's nicole kidman that i saw that, that's knocking over my podcast stand here <laughs> let me see <laughs> I, I don't want to i don't want to say she's the face of if it's not yeah no it is nicole kidman as brand ambassador um i got it I don't know that we have time for this, but we have a follow-up to a previous advice, though. I think we might need to save this for next week. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a, wait, it's a follow-up? Yeah. No, we got to do it now. Really? Yeah, you piqued my interest. <laughs> okay, so this was the woman that had inquired. Uh, it was a car episode for us. Um, her boyfriend had recently picked up smoking weed as like a casual habit, but it had been like four times a day. I didn't read the follow-up. I just saw what it was about. So... Hi, Ryland and Lizzie. I listened to your podcast where you answered this question and I have an update for you guys and a follow-up question. I had a chat with my boyfriend about him smoking weed almost daily and it uh, and it bothering me. And I think I fell into more what Ryland suggested where it is just flat out annoying to me. Because you had suggested maybe he was, it was more like addiction based. And I think it was more of like just a, a new habit mm-hmm. and it was just an, an annoyance for her. In conclusion, he says that he is just going through a phase and working in a ski resort. We are long distance now, and it's just the culture and that he doesn't have plans to stop smoking daily anytime soon. My worry is that when he is out smoking and such with people, he just forgets I exist, expect, uh, expected, expected when, when smoking weed. But I won't hear from him for hours, and it makes me sad. I have expressed that, but nothing has changed. I do not plan on breaking up with him, as I just know he is my person, and every other aspect of our relationship is absolutely perfect. Should I be annoyed by this, or am I just crazy? I love you guys always. I would definitely be annoyed by this. Yeah. And I, I know when this episode went live, a lot of people are like, right, it's so annoying. Everyone's smoking weed. And it's like, I don't really care if you're, I don't care what you're doing. You could be doing anything with your life, but if it's affecting the relationships in your life or your number one person feels slighted because of your actions. I feel like you should be accountable for that mm-hmm. or reevaluate your relationship and be like, well, if I'm in this place where smoking weed is a priority to me and my girlfriend isn't in that place and it creates a divide, there's obviously a little bit of an issue. Yeah. So for the follow up, I just think. If you guys, it is the big, it's culture in the ski towns. These people move seasonally or full time to like, and a lot of people that do this only do this for a few years. So he might be in his like twenties or thirties and just like, oh, this is a couple years of my life and this is what I want to do. And that's fine. And if this is your person, it's your person. But I would explain to him, like, I feel as though when you're smoking frequently throughout the day, you forget about me. And if that's going to be the new normal, then I don't know if I can participate in this while weed is a 
it, it makes weed a bigger priority yeah. for him than she is. She said she did express that to him and nothing has changed. And, you know, I, I think it's fine for people to have hobbies that are and re to recreationally use drugs like I'm not opposed to that. But I do think that there are there is a difference between a person who doesn't have addictive personality traits mm -hmm. and a person who suffers with addiction and a person who doesn't. Right. And to me, when you have decided that a substance or a behavior is your priority over everything else, including your primary re love relationship, that is an indication that you have a toxic relationship with whatever it is that you're putting before people. That's yeah. not normal. And as a person, I smoked weed. Uh, when I, my first relapse from my sobriety, I was sober for a year. And then I came back to using marijuana and I started smoking weed. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was like, I'm going to smoke weed maybe one to four times a year. It's just going to be a cute little fun thing I do from time to time. Right. I'm going to just smoke weed once a month. All I'm going to do is get high like once a month. I'm going to get high on every weekend. I'm just going to smoke weed every weekend like a normal girly. I'm going to smoke weed when I get off work every day. Every day when I'm done working, I'm going to smoke weed. I'm going to need to smoke weed before I start working. <laughs> and then I'm going to need to get high again in two hours because I'm not going to be high then. And then I'm going to need to smoke four bong rips in a row. And I'm going to giggle about it and call it a marathon bong rip. And that's the way I use because I'm a person who gets addicted to things. Right. In my mind, I would say, God, I never, I can never go to sleep without marijuana. Like I need weed to go to sleep. I can't travel to this state because they don't allow marijuana there. And if I do go to that state, I'm going to illegally bring it with me at the risk of criminal charges being brought against me that could ruin my life. Right. You know, I don't have a job to pay for these drugs. I'm going to have somebody else pay for these drugs for me because I need these drugs more than I need food. All of these things are not normal ways of thinking about weed. So you can say weed is not addictive. Great. I'm an addict. Right. I can be addicted to fucking anything. So it's not about the substance. It's about the person. And if the person is acting like an addict, they're probably an addict. Right. That's my point. And it could be a phase for him. Like uh, there are people that do successfully casually smoke and maybe yeah. it is his environment. I just think I would get in check like are you not talking to me because the weed or are you so involved in the community and where you're at that it's just harder to connect with me? And if that's the problem setting up, like when is convenient for both of us and let's have that check in every day. Like, is it yeah. after dinner? Like, cause if the work day is busy and you are smoking, like fine. I just think you need to evaluate. Is yeah. I just don't ever want to spend a point in my life where I'm scheduling my partner's whatever use. I guess that's true. Like, like it, that's fucking annoying. Yeah, if I had to like schedule a time to call Shane when he's available, I'd be like, Yeah, no. this is like too if much. If I need you, I want to talk to you. Yeah. Like if I want to call you because there's something to tell you, I want you to answer. You're right. Yeah. I hate it. It's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right. Um, I'm not saying dump him, but I am like, let's call a spade a spade, bro. Like if you're doing something in a certain way, it's a problem. Not everybody has a problem. I'm not saying everybody has a problem. I am saying there are flags on this play that tell me. There this is not be. standard recreational drug use. Right. And I wish to fucking God I could be a fucking regular drug user because <laughs> I love drugs, dude. I think they're really fucking awesome if you're not a problem with them. I'm a fucking problem with them. And I am also just because everybody's like, weed's not addictive. When I quit smoking weed, I had a physical fucking withdrawal period. I was sweating like a fucking maniac. I couldn't fucking sleep. Well, I lost weight. I was sick. I was irritable. I was discontent. And not all of that was my spiritual malady. A no. lot of that was a physical dependence on a substance that I used every fucking day. And I think previously, I don't know if we had stated that how heavily you used weed at one time. So they're just like two squares that don't smoke pot. No, talking I about pot. Yeah, no, I smoked weed all day, every day. Wasn't not high. For years. Couldn't come over to your house without access to weed because I'd panic. Like that's not normal. Right. That's not normal. And, yes. And that is what I was referring to, too, is like when I was in high school and we couldn't even go to breakfast without like a 20 minute smoke sesh for everyone. It's like we can't just exist as people without which yeah. I, I'm fine with people smoking. I'm fine with smoking casually myself. I just don't like when it has to be done before we can do something else. Yeah. Like and I wish desperately that you and I could casually get high every third year. Yeah. And I'm so like 
I mean, it's pathetic, but I'm devastated. <laughs> like, honestly, because there are some times when you and I are doing something I'm like, God, I wish we could get a little high right now and giggle and have it not be really sad for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't know if we gave you advice to move forward, but I would further check in with him or reevaluate yeah, fucking buggy. once more. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting our podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We will hopefully be back next week as well. If not, there's little baby boys that are in this world. And we're showing them the squid games. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, everyone's links are in the description section below. Um, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. sip. <sighs> oh, Lizzie's doing oh. vlogmas too. Oh, I'm doing vlogmas. Didn't we talk about this? I think so, but I just wanted to do one Tuesdays more time. Tuesdays and Thursdays, bitch. And then there might be one random one thrown out there because I realized I overshot and there's more than eight episodes. <laughs> All right. Toodles. Bye. Bye.